In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations who will hear all of these statutes and say, this great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord, our God, is to us whenever we call upon him. Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are just, that are as just as this whole law which I'm setting before you today. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Tonight's response is the, Lord, the one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue, the one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. Those who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who lends not his money at usury, and accepts no bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things, shall never be disturbed. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the letters of St. James. <clears throat> Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no altercation or shadow caused by change. He will to give us birth by the word of truth, 
that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips to be worthily and fitting and proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes question him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, well, well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written. The people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From good <coughs> people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We've all enjoyed another awesome week in our beautiful and still very dry paradise. I think today is the closest we've come to some rain in the area. We'll definitely keep praying for it. This is Labor Day weekend, the unofficial end of the summer season. It's crowded weekend in our little town. I heard that the Riverside had over a thousand check-ins on Friday alone. And that's just one of the hotels in town. People are coming from all over just to get to spend a few days with us. Labor Day weekend has been a national holiday since 1894. So for 130 years, we have observed this first Monday of September as the unofficial end of the summer, beginning of the go back to school season for many people, especially in the eastern part of our country. I think it's also a good reminder to us when people ask me, you know, why I love living here in paradise so much, they always say because I live in a resort area. I live in a place where people spend good money just to come and spend a few days or a couple of weeks, and I get to wake up here every day. I think we're very fortunate to be in this beautiful area, a resort, a place where people come and want to be. And on Labor Day weekend, that becomes particularly obvious. 
One of the sites, and I mentioned this before, that I like to look at is a site called On This Day, just to see what's happened in the history of our world on this day. And September 1st, this Sunday of Labor Day weekend, I found a couple of items, and they, the two that I want to mention relate to the city of <coughs> Boston in Massachusetts. So for any of you who have come from the East Coast out here like I did, maybe you can relate to these. On this date, September the 1st, in 1878, the first female telephone operator went to work. She went to work for a telephone company in Boston, Massachusetts. When I think of that, I think of two things when I think of telephone operator. One of them I'm sure you all share with me. I think of Ernestine on Saturday Night Live. One ringy-dingy, two ringy-dingy. Lily Tomlin played that part so very well. I also think of my own mother. My mother was a long-distance telephone operator in the 1940s. That means she sat at a switchboard, took the plugs, plugged them in to connect people's phone calls. That's kind of amazing to think back that that's happened so relatively recently. Then I thought back on my own childhood. I grew up in Montvale, New Jersey. I could literally see New York City from my town. That's how close we were. I could see the buildings in New York City and we did not have a dial telephone system in the 1960s. We had to pick up the phone and ask the operator to connect us. And I remember the operator who was on most days when I was in high school, her name was Mary, and I would just pick up the phone and say, Mary, I want to talk to, and as soon as I mentioned the name, I usually didn't have to give her the number because there were so few people in the area, she knew who I wanted to talk to, and she would plug me in over there. No one can remark how strange that was. I can see New York City, and yet I still have to operate a phone without even using the dial because we didn't have that technology. <coughs> I thought of that and I went through my collection of many things and never throw anything out. <laughs> And that was what a phone, imagine carrying this around now and trying to make calls. What amazed me most about it was, is when I tried to dial my phone number, it took me so long just to dial the seven. Imagine getting through the other nine digits of it to get through. And how heavy it was. I mean, these things, you throw this phone at somebody, they're gonna feel it. The first female telephone operator was back in the 1870s, and I think that brought back some very, very good memories. And in 1897, on this date, September the 1st this weekend, the Boston Rapid Transit System opened. It was the first underground transportation system, not only in the United States, but in North America and it gradually developed, it became a company known as the MTA, the Metropolitan Transit Authority in Boston. And if you might remember back, most people know about the MTA, not because they studied history, but they know about the MTA from that famous song, Charlie on the MTA. Maybe you remember, it came out in 1949 and then it was revived in 1959 by the Kingston Trio, and it became a political campaign song for the mayoral race in Boston. Most people can remember even some of the words of it. Well, let me tell you the story of a man named Charlie. On a tragic and fateful day, he put 10 cents in his pocket, kissed his wife and family, went to ride on the MTA. Well, did he ever return? No, he never returned, and his fate is still unlearned. Poor old Charlie, he may ride forever neath the streets of Boston. He's the man who never returned. And that song was a popular protest song because the Metropolitan Transit Authority had dared to raise the fee on the subway from 10 cents to 15 cents. That became a thing. I thought of having us sing that song, but I think we won't do that tonight, but we're going to be better. Our readings today, the one reading I want to concentrate on for Labor Day weekend is from Deuteronomy. It's our first reading today. It's 
Labor Day weekend, I just thought one simple point would be good to get across. In that reading, Moses said to the people, now listen and put into practice all these commands of the Lord that I tell you. And if you do so, you will be regarded as a wise and intelligent people by all those around you. We look at the commandments that God gave us in the book of Exodus. We look at those and we sometimes say, oh my gosh, I can't do that, I can't do this. These are so limiting to my life. They stop me from doing things. The ancient Israelites looked on them from a whole different perspective. They said, look how good God is. Look how close God is to us. He even tells us how to live so as to get the most out of life this life, and so as to enjoy eternal life the most. And Moses goes on to say that if you live this way, not only do you feel good, but other nations will look at you and will say, look how close God is to this people. He even tells them how to live. What a wise and intelligent people they are. They listen to their God. They do what he says. On this Labor Day weekend, we're lucky to either be visiting this resort, this part of paradise, or to actually live here ourselves. And we're blessed. God loves us so much that he continues to tell us how best to live so as to get the most out of this life and the most out of the life to come. God bless you. We stand together on the words of our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great hope and great trust, we bring our prayers to God, our loving Father. We pray for our church and for all those who continue to teach us how to live under God's law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For peace in our world, for the protection of the men and women who serve in our military forces, for Christians still persecuted anywhere, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who are sick, those facing surgery or recovering from it, those on our parish prayer list. And we ask your prayers for <coughs> Mike Strode, Pam Altobelli, Deacon Dan McHugh, Father Bob Pullman, Joe Healy, and Benito Ledesma. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the blessing of rain in our area, especially during what remains of the monsoon season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For a safe Labor Day weekend along our beautiful Colorado River, for our locals and for those who visit us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the special intention of this Mass for Diggy Beato, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the blessings you continue to share with us. Keep us faithful to you and close to you throughout our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us, all, confer on us always the blessing of salvation that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her together in the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be. the body of Christ. We invite those who were unable to receive Holy Communion at this Mass or those who were watching it online to join with Deacon Richard in the prayer of spiritual Holy Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul and body. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart into my soul, and into my body. I embrace you as if you are already there, and I unite myself entirely to you. 
never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 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 Remind you to please take home a copy of our parish bulletin for information on coming events. We also remind you that the summer sale on the books that I've written will end this weekend. All the books are $10 each. Beginning on Tuesday, they will go up to $15 each. The two new books and the older books will stay at $10 each. We also remind you to your left as you leave, there's uh, two application forms. One for religious education, for parents to sign their children up for First Communion or Confirmation classes. And the details are listed in the parish bulletin. The other one for becoming Catholic. For those adults who were baptized in another religion and want to become Catholic, those not baptized at all who want to become Catholic, and those adults who were baptized Catholic but never completed their First Communion or Confirmation, that Becoming Catholic program. Uh, there's details on it in the bulletin, but the form is to the table to your left over there. With that in mind, we also remind you, uh, next Sunday, uh, the September the 8th, there'll be a gathering at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Sunday afternoon, September 8th, over in the Garza Center. For those who are interested in the Becoming Catholic program and want to just ask any questions uh, or learn some more about it beyond what's listed in the parish bulletin. Some people were asking when we're going to start doing some shows in the Garza Center this year, uh, and it's hard putting a, a schedule together when the number of people is limited. I calculated it out that we would have to have at least 100 people attend the shows to make it worthwhile to bring entertainers down from Vegas or California. So I scheduled a magic show for September 29th the last Sunday in September, four o'clock in the afternoon. It's a great family show. The guy is a world-known magician, uh, David Johnson. You could look him up online. I'll have some details in the bulletin about him next week. The tickets will go on sale next weekend, and they're going to be $15 each. But we need to sell 100 tickets to make it worthwhile for us to bring these entertainers down here. I'm sure you'll enjoy Dave's show if you come, uh, but you'll learn more about that uh, next week. Please stand and let us pray. Renewed by the spread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and serve us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.